Oh, hi there. Do come in. I'm just setting up, really, for my next um, YouTube video. Um, come in and uh, and watch everything. I'm just going to make a cup of tea first. And uh, you're very, very, very welcome to watch a recording. Well, if you can just bear with me while I uh, make a cup of tea. Um, ah, that's my uh, fisherman's mug. And that's for my wife. So I'll just get this made and then uh, I'll be with you. Well, here is another painting that I did down in the Cotswolds. It's the third one of the week. And um, it... Um, I actually, the scene was um, somewhere that we walked several times. It's actually um, the, the, the village of Broadway is more or less at the back here. And that's a lovely old manor house that um, the footpath runs through a gate and round. You get a lovely walk all the way up into the hill and um, uh, you can find your way back into the village um, um, coming down. Um, but as I turned, well, I walked along there one day, and as I turned, it was this type of day. It was quite um, cloudy and um, um, threatening rain at times. Um, but as I walked down, I turned back, and all of a sudden, the sun came out into this lovely Cotswold Manor House. And um, I thought that would make a lovely scene. So I quickly put a little sketch down, and... Um, I actually painted it when I on the patio of the accommodation when I returned uh, back to our um, cottage. And um, this coming Friday, I will show you exactly the painting process at 6 p.m. UK time. But I'll just give you a taster and a little insight how I actually painted this. Well, the first thing I did, um, this is a larger um, version of, uh, of um, my normal size. Uh, this was the only large one that I actually produced. Um, but I just thought it, I wanted to put the drama in. And I think you can do that uh, a lot better when um, you paint uh, this sort of size. You know, it's the sky that interested me. Um, so what I did, I damped in uh, some areas, leaving some areas dry, uh, my normal process. I then painted in Payne's Grey, varying tones, fairly dark there, and also quite dark behind the building. And that area, I added a little Indian red to give it a slightly warmer tone to that, so that that comes forward a touch. That was the only reason. It helps to highlight the building. Um, then I dropped in a little um, patches of ultramarine here and there, leaving some hard edges, some, when I went up into the um, damp area, you get some soft edges. I then put in some little touches of raw sienna. I think they sort of help the feeling of, um, of, of thundery clouds, really, or certainly a uh, um, rain cloud. Um, I did put in some distant cloud there. Uh, in actual fact, it looks a little bit more like a hill. Um, I would have preferred to have softened that, but leave well alone once you drop it in. Um, you know, I was happy with the overall feel of the sky. Uh, that is actually cloud uh, over the horizon. Um, then, can you see the raw sienna just bleeding up into that? I, I painted raw sienna over that area. Also raw sienna here and across the foreground. So that's that very light yellowy, um, grey yellow colour. That's the raw sienna. And once I dropped that in, I then painted in some green areas uh, using varying mixes uh, of um, uh, Windsor Blue and uh, Raw Sienna uh, and in the foreground Cadmium uh, Lemon and Cadmium um, Yellow. Um, I did leave some patches of white and as I pulled the, the, the brush across the paper, I allowed some of the paper to shine through. So that was really the basic first process. I then tinted the building, the roof area, you know, tone values, all about tones. Um, 
and then I start to paint in the um, the distant trees now I wanted a very blue area there so I damped the paper and put in a blue area and that's quite damp there then I went into the hard edge to get the top of that uh, fir tree then I used a dry brush to try and uh, indicate um, the, the probably willow um, then as I came forward there were some soft edges and hard edges as I painted the blue, the cool greys and the more refreshing uh, greens but I finished the painting along the top edge and round some hedging near to the building and the top edge of that um, uh, stone walling because I wanted to see where I have left light when I painted the stone walling I left some little glimpse of light coming through because the sunlight is coming from the left from the right creating shadows on the left um, and as you can see the the side of that building is almost purely white paper I did tint the lower area there's a balustrade there where presumably you can sit out um, uh, on the extension that's coming out of the side um, then this side I painted really dark with some overhanging trees um, just to give take away from the squareness of the whole uh, thing of the building and there again dry brush work and um, light uh, sorry dark so it's lights the building was light dark then I wanted a light area so I put in a lighter wash then a medium tone and, and slightly darker along the edge of the field um, where the sunlight is casting onto the building so that worked out particularly well um, then I put the fencing in notice the good perspective of that fence from a tall post through to very um, um, very small posts there is a gateway there but I left it white um, but I didn't want to get too specific with that because once you start detail there you know it does detract from the building I think um, so I decided to keep that fairly plain and simple I did pop in a couple of figures one blue and one red and the dog uh, and I did drag across a little of a funnel of a path running towards the figures and just one or two little touches there um, away towards the gate um, then obviously I tinted in the lighter greens there leaving um, plenty of white paper plenty of white edges notice along the bottom there along the top of that hedging as I say around the gate and I painted around the windows so the windows were left white at this stage then I painted in the window areas not the shadows just the window areas um, as I say tinting the figures in um, I did then decide to put my shadow work on now I wanted to be very dark under there and I think I used um, ultramarine blue that's a French ultramarine blue and Indian red and I put in a very dark blue um, blue red shadow there but went a bit light, lighter with the casting shadow from these trees across the building so you know although there is two tones of shadow they are both shadow uh, and that one is further away obviously the overhanging gutter is very close so you get a, a, a deep shadow where the tree is standing away from the building the shadow is less intense then I put a nice strong shadow down the wall um, some little touches running across here and there uh, the, the front of the building trying to keep that really light uh, obviously when I painted the chimneys I didn't put any shadows on those because particularly there I would have lost it against the dark background there wasn't really any shadows on those anyway then I swept a shadow across the foreground in places mainly where the wall is casting a shadow and across most of the right hand side uh, a little weaker across the left but I left the figures in, sh in, in sunlight and created a darker shadow underneath the figures um, so you've got you know this is more or less cloud shadow you know uh, where the sun has been blocked by a cloud so that's a soft shadow then you've got hard edge shadows in places 
could be a tree out of picture there was one or two trees standing in the ground out of picture uh, and then I dropped in some Indian red I think it was Indian red that I painted in I like a bit of red within the greens and the shadows in the foreground because then that gives you um, a feeling that the foreground you know the red comes forward and the, and the, the less intense colors sit back uh, then I just popped in a couple of birds they were um, floating around there at some point I did notice um, I believe it started to rain because I can see some little patches of, of um, rain spots there that's the only thing if you're painting plein air if you get rain spots then um, they do spoil uh, the the wash um, but um, I did recover it I don't go over again you know if you get rain spots on that's the natural that's how it was painted cover it over quick uh, and allow the shower to go by or put a brolly up or something to protect but if you do get any little patches of of these um, uh, rain spots just leave them continue finish the painting so that's basically the painting process and then of course I signed in my normal way um, with paint that I used to paint the picture well there you have it I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching that and um, uh, and seeing the base and, uh, and listening to the basic principles as to how this was painted um, so my next video will be at will be uploaded 6 p.m. UK time on this coming Friday obviously you can watch any time after that um, but I will be um, interacting uh, on uh, a messenger basis if any, if any of you have any questions as I um, um, as I paint the scene um, so in the meantime happy painting and we'll see you on Friday 6 p.m. UK time and I will demonstrate the complete painting process. I'm going to finish my tea off. Well, we're taking a walk this morning um, around the outskirts of Broadway, and the scene behind me seems to be attracting me uh, to uh, a possible painting. <laughs>